what is going on guys welcome to another adventure we're back in idaho i'm out here with my dad we're gonna do some bass fishing maybe some sturgeon fishing later but bass fishing we're search for sure we kind of have all day so we'll have to see how the bass fishing is if we really slay them and we're like you know what we're kind of done with this we might do some sturgeon fishing later but we are bass fishing bass kayak fishing actually today uh, this is my dad's hobie pro angler kayak and uh you yeah. you like this thing I love it. I love it. <laughs> and then i got the outback for you kayak enthusiasts we'll go over that in a second but we're on the snake river beautiful day out here um it's early spring so the bass fishing sometimes can be really good as far as you get your biggest ones of the year so we'll see we'll see but let's, let's get it. out there let's do it all right guys this is my craft for today uh real quick real real fast rundown if you're new to the kayak uh, world it's hobie kayak it has the pedal drive we got storage in there we got storage all our tackle stuff boom right in there got a couple of fishing rods with us all the camera gear of course and pliers and different things and a real nice seat so we just got a launcher growing up in iowa i can remember as a kid in history class reading about the snake river and thinking oh my goodness would it be so cool to see that place one day and now i live you know <laughs> live real close to it so anyway this is pretty special pretty good time and uh, we've caught some bass back here in these backwaters before so i'm going to give that a try today let's see what we can do today here this kind of weather this kind of uh of uh, water temperature most of the bite is a reaction bite you pull it in front of their face ticks them off and they jump out at it a bass is a lot like a cat you know, you drag a ball or a mouse or something fake across the front of a cat and you just can't help but jump out after it. And, and uh, bass are a lot like that. Fish on. Woo! Hey! <laughs> I snagged him. I could feel him biting. Oh, he got off. There you go. Small mouth. Nice. At least they're following it. All right, so we threw that hard bait for a while. Now we're going to go after a little, going to do a little tube, a little double dip tube, Dry Creek Outfitter tube and Dry Creek Outfitter custom trophy baits bass scent. Let's try this out here. Give a little, make that bass want to hang on a little longer so I can get a good hook set in, make sure he wants it. Just kind of dance in that tube across the bottom. There we go. Fish on. Nice. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> See what we got here. Ooh. Ah, good little smallie. He picked that up, didn't he? There we go. Ah, nothing like it. Snake River smallie. There we go. Not a biggie, but a beauty. So we'll let him go and go after the next one. All right, guys, this is my first lure. I'm starting out with a little uh, strike. Yeah. Strike King. It's not labeled, but I'm pretty sure it's a Strike King just based on the look of it. Uh, a little shallow running Sartreuse crankbait because the water is quite, quite muddy. We got a little spot up here. Check out this spot. So right up there. Oh, it's not flowing. Normally there's a creek flowing in right up here. Let me back up. It's cool being out this kayak because it has reverse. Oh, guys, check out the school of carp. There are a ton of carp right here. You guys see that? Holy mackerel. Oh, my snag came out. Look at all those fish. Whoa. That is crazy. Oh, I see some bass with him. I see some bass. No joke. There were some largemouth. I spooked him, but there are some bass hanging out there with him. All right, guys, so we have a situation here. At this spot, I, I saw like four or five nice largemouth hanging out right there, but I spooked them. They were in like six inches of water, but I spooked them, and I spooked kind of all the fish, so they're all kind of swirling around. So we're going to leave this spot. We're going to let it settle. We're going to let the fish come back and all kind of settle down. And then we're going to probably walk up on the bank here, and we're just going to sneak up on them real subtly and probably throw in like some weightless tubes and see if we can sight fish for them. But we got to be patient. Got to wait about 10 or 15 minutes for them to come back. We'll go down, we'll fish, we'll fish down here with our other stuff and then we'll come back to this clear water spot and we'll do some epic sight fishing right here. Um, 
One thing about the Snake River in the area that I am in, uh, 40 degree water comes out of the rock pretty much year round. So I'm sure you can hear the water, but what happens is that water, the trout farms catch a lot of it, but they don't catch all of it. And so you hear that? That's, that's spring water or aquifer water coming out of the canyon walls, trickling down, and it just comes into the Snake River here. That's why you hardly ever see the Snake River around here. You just never see it iced over because there's always fresh 40 degree water coming in. And in the summertime, it keeps it cool. And in the wintertime, it tends to keep it kind of warm. So uh, relatively speaking, between the speed of the water and the, and the 40 degree water added all the time, you just don't get a lot of ice on this part of the Snake River. That might have been a little something there. Yep, there we go. I felt him pick it up. Come on. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good largemouth. I got him. <laughs> that's not the one we saw earlier. He's a good one. Nice. Oh, come to Papa. Woo, that's pretty. That is a pretty fish. Look at that. Got to get a picture of this one, send it to the boys. Let's see, come here, Bubba. There we go, look at that. That's a gotta go too. All right, nice. Oh yeah. Nice, that was fun. All right, my friends, here we are. We're gonna sneak up on this spot. We're gonna get off on shore here. We gotta be real cagey. Let's go get some bass. Let's get him. These bass are so shallow. Guys, there's so many of them. One swim over. Did he get it? Did he get it? Got him! Got one! Yes! Yes! Oh, drag's a little loose. Yes! Sight fishing for largemouth, baby! <laughs> right? Yes! Yes! Guys! Oh. Get these weeds out of the way. Not a giant, but a fun fish song will swim right over. Whoop! Look at that! Look at that! That is my first largemouth of the year. A sight fish for it. Nice little keeper there, probably about a pound and a half. I think this is gonna be the first ever largemouth catch and cook on my channel. All right guys, so I just came up with a crazy plan. There are so many fish here and the water's so clear. We're gonna put an underwater camera, we're gonna clamp it on and then we're gonna leave and let's see what swims up in here. got this tailwater coming out of the trout farm up there. Let's see just for fun if there's anything hanging out down there. I'll show you what I've got on there here in just a second. There we go. Oh, it was on. It just took it. Took it. Oh, it's a nice trout. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's a pretty trout. Imagine that, catching a trout underneath the trout farm. Oh, he took it in deep too. I think we're going to eat this one. Let's get him up here to let you see him. There we go. He'll eat. Got 
got him again. So here we go. I don't know what it is, but it's a good one. Probably a carp. Oh no, that's a bass. No, no, that's cat. Oh my gosh, if that's a bass, that's a big one. Holy, that, no, it's a big trout. Oh my gosh. Can you believe this? Oh my goodness. Oh my heavens, that's, a, that's the biggest trout I've ever caught, if I can catch him. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Look at this. Oh yeah. Come on, hog. Oh gosh. Jeez, I don't have a net. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a good fish. Come on, stay on. Got to get over to the shallows. See if I can get him out over here. I think this will get it. Okay. Now, reel him up. Reel him up. Oh my gosh, look at this trout, you guys. Look at this trout. Look at this trout. Oh my gosh. Look, it's a rainbow. I can't believe how big this thing is. He's still fighting me. Come on. Oh gosh. I don't want to go. Okay, I'm going to have to tighten it down just a little bit. Okay, come on. Turn your head. Come up here. Oh my word. Look at the size of this pig. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Come on. No, 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 no. Okay. All right, I'll let you run a little more. Just get tired out and... Oh, I can't even lift him in the boat. I'm gonna have to go through his gills. There we go. Oh my word, look at that. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, baby. Man, woo hoo. Yes, yes indeed, okay. Check that pig out. Oh my goodness. Talk about some fillets. Woo, yes. All right. All right, my friends, here is the situation. I got my underwater camera up there and I don't know if this will work, but we're going to fish right in front of it and let's see if we can get some bass with the underwater camera down there.
Well guys, here's my verdict. The bass are too spooked. And with a GoPro, as I've learned over the years, when you put a GoPro down there with them, they're on high alert. They're like, something's not right. Or they see that device and they're like, I don't know what that is, but they're, they're just, their senses are all up and they're kind of suspicious of everything else when you put a camera down there with them. So anyway, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to try that another time, maybe when they're more aggressive, but uh, let's keep fishing. Hey. Which one do you want me to keep? You caught two? I caught two. Holy mackerel! Oh, that's a monster! That is the biggest trout that, I've ever that's caught. A, yeah, that's your personal best? Yes. Holy But mackerel. I need your stringer, man. This thing is terrible. Okay, my okay. I will, I will get the stringer. Oh my goodness. All Can right. I let him go? No, you let oh, him go. Oh, I've got it. What oh. is that? Like a five pound oh, trout? I don't know, but. I, you know what? I think with if you want to keep fishing, I'm getting really hungry yeah, and I'm going to take too. him back and I'm going to start cooking. I got the bass and the trout. Guys, see what you got. Oh my look gosh. at that. Woo. Here, a nice large and a massive trout. He, I had to kill him because he's got my bait. Oh, he, he swallowed it. I'm sorry, I should have told you. Guys, I mean, are we going to have a feast or what? This is crazy, crazy cool day of fishing. Let's head back. Let's cook these up. But before we cook these up, I want you guys to notice my hoodie, my stylish hoodie. I'll put a link to this in the description if you guys want to check it out. I have been leveling up my apparel game lately. Thanks to Flag and Anthem. Thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Let's send it over to them. So in case you guys are new to my channel, one of my personal mottos for a long time, even before I started being a YouTuber, was level up in real life. When I was about 20 years old, um, started to get old, I graduated high school and started to work, um, but I'd always come home and I would play video games. That was still a pretty high priority, something that I always liked doing, but I was like, I'm a man now, I need to like level up in real life. At the time I started playing RuneScape all the time. One thing about RuneScape that's interesting is you're always trying to like level up this little character in everyday life, like real life skills. And it hit me kind of over time. There wasn't really like one day that it hit me, but just over time I thought if I spend as much time like working on myself and working on my own personal skills as I do this like fake character in this goofy game, I would be a really cool person. And so I started to do that and I started to play fewer and fewer video games till I haven't, I don't own an Xbox, don't own a PS4 and haven't um, really played any video games as far as like seriously, like, like if I'm at a friend's house, like, hey, you want to play some Call of Duty? I'll play, I'm not gonna be a stick in the mud and not play or whatever, but. So five years later when I started a YouTube channel, I knew immediately that I wanted to make the tagline level up in real life. And I've been doing that ever since, ever since I've about, been about 20 years old, 27 now. So uh, really advanced a lot in the last seven years. But one of the things that I have not advanced really in, or that I wasn't really pursuing because I hate shopping, is dressing better. And when I was younger, I used to do the bare minimum. I was kind of the, uh, I call it the like the Walmart grunge look, like go get a plain t-shirt and buy a super cheap pair of jeans and just wear the jeans for years until they're threadbare and there are holes in them and uh, just wear the t-shirt till it looks like garbage. And I thought, you know, I need to level up my clothing game and I just never got around to it over the years. And I would make little kind of swipes at it and I got a little bit better, but last year, um, one of the things that really inspired me actually was meeting this girl, and I can't give too much information because I don't want to reveal her identity and all that stuff. That's not super important. But the thing was, I met this girl, and she always, among many things, she was an entrepreneur. She was head of her, I really can't say, but anyway, she was, she was head of her group of girls, entrepreneur, and beautiful. She always dressed really well, extremely well. I thought, okay, this is it. I have to start dressing better. And if you guys noticed in videos last year, I started to wear uh, clo clothes from a company called Flag and Anthem. And now they're a sponsor of my channel. In fact, if you go back through old videos, I will have Flag and Anthem shirts on a lot. And even Flag and Anthem shorts. In fact, I think I own like 12 pieces of Flag and Anthem clothing now. And like this shirt right here. Normally I would I would only, like this would used to be dressing up for me. Now I will wear this just in a day around the house. This is a Flag and Anthem, just a beautiful charcoal gray long sleeve shirt. Here is one of their button up shirts. I really love that. This is like premium, premium. 
if you're just putting this on, I feel like I should be like in one of those Dosanki commercials, like, stay thirsty, my friends, you know, one of those, something like that. They have super premium clothes. If you guys use my code ACE at checkout, you get 20, not 10, not 15, which is like the tradition, you get 20% off your order. I'll put a link at the top of the description. Look like the details on these clothes. So they're super premium clothes without like the insane prices. This is not like a $200 sh uh, button up shirt. So level up your clothing game, guys, by visiting flagandanthem.com. Link in the description. Let's get back to fishing. My brother Mike is sturgeon fishing over there. I'll put a link to his video. I think he's caught, I know he's caught quite a few fish actually. And uh, so check out his video guys. I'll put that link that in the description. He's sturgeon fishing and trout fishing. All right, here we are. Hello, bro. How goes it? I sight fish for my first bass in a clear spot over there. No kidding. Yep, caught one. And Papa caught a massive trout, like a five pound trout. What? I have it on a stringer. How, you, how have you been doing? Good, dude, I got uh, I got like a, uh, I think it's tickling six foot sturgeon. Um, Those shades though. I know, dude, if you guys want any shades, go to my video, you'll find a link to them in the description. You know, I've actually had quite a few people ask me, bro. Where'd you get those shades? So, Are you gonna start a new trend? You know what, maybe I will, maybe I will. Oh, I'm, am I getting a bite? Oh, you, oh, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Anywho, oh, I'm dressed in time. She jumped out of the water. Oh, really? Like, like 25 yards out, just jumped all, the only thing that didn't come out was the tail. It was epic. <laughs> That really is cool. so cool. Yep. Knives out. Oh, look at this guy. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't think I've cleaned a regular trout this big before, actually. Let's see how much this trout weighs. 6.04. That's after bleed out, too. Wow, six pound trout. Yo, let's see what's in his stomach. Oh, it has pink meat, too. It doesn't feel like there's much in the stomach. Oh, wait, wait, we got some stuff here. We got some stuff. That's interesting. Okay, so we have a ton of little snails and green algae. So this trout's been eating green algae and a whole bunch of little snails there. That's crazy. All right, guys, get ready for it. Get ready. Whoa. Check out that gorgeous pink meat right there. It didn't, it didn't bleed out all the way. I thought it bled out, but, uh, huh. Kind of weird, but. All right, my friends, now that our salmon, oh, I mean trout, is done, that's what it looks like, salmon. Now that's done, let's fillet a little largemouth here. This bass has like nothing in its guts. Really? Yeah, nothing. He ain't eating the thing. No, that's why he was hungry. He was the only hungry one in the group. Oh, nice. There we go. Nice bass fillet. <laughs> you got two totally different types of meat there. We will start with a bass, since that's kind of a novelty. Cut it into some nice chunks. And then we have here, guys, we're gonna deep fry these fish. We're also gonna deep fry some pickles. This is some regular Louisiana kitchen fish fry, but to me it doesn't, uh, doesn't cut mustard. Cut mustard, whatever that phrase is. So we have some black pepper here that we are gonna put in. And then we have here some salt that we will put in because the seasoning definitely isn't salty. And then something really fun. I have here Arizona Dreaming salt-free Penzi's Spices. I got some mail from some subscribers, the Garner family. They want to thank me for the content and they wanted me to send me a taste of Arizona where they used to live. They just now moved to Washington. And so we're basically making deep fried Southwest fish today. And we're gonna be real generous. Ooh, stings my eyes, the, the dust from it. Wow. This is some, this is packs a punch here. It's very light. It's gonna be spicy. We got some Southwest spice going on. Literally, the wind swirled some in my eyes there. I'm gonna mix that all around. I gotta go dunk my head in the lake real quick. Did not dunk my head in the lake, that was a joke, but don't get Southwest in your eyes, folks. I'm gonna put these fillets, boop, 
in there. Shake. We will add them to, oh, the oil is hot. Good old frying sound right there. Beautiful. We'll put the lid on. And then I brought with me today some pickles, my friends. I didn't want to bring the whole jar out here, but I uh, wanted to fry some pickles. We will add some of this mix here and shake as well. So we got pickles and fish, and we'll fry them all together. I want to make my dad a nice little plate here. Oh, nice. I'm uh, fresh off my last cook-off win. Okay, get out of here. And, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys want to check out the cook-off video Mike and I just did. All right, guys. Time to remove the fried bass. Oh, looking good. And then I'm going to add while we wait, or while I bring this to my dad, we're going to add some of these fried pickles here. Thank you pickle morsels. Now we'll add a piece of fish as well. Scoot over there, chumps. Put that on. Let's let my dad take a taste test. You know what, my dad has walked, has walked over there a ways, so I'm actually going to take the first plate of fish. And when he gets back, then we'll, uh, then I'll feed him. Say a quick prayer. Woo, what a blessed day. What a blessed, blessed day. I hear my pickles. You know, the pickles are only gonna take a few, they're gonna, they're gonna take like a minute, I think. All right, fried bass. You know, I'm gonna dip it in this fry sauce right away. Mmm. Oh, hot. Hot, but it's good. Let's check out this fried pickle situation. Don't want to overcook these little suckers here. Flip our fish. Ooh. Pops, you are just Ooh. in time for oh fried pickles word. and fried fish. So let's do the pickles first here. And that's bass, just to let you know. It's not the trout. We'll try the trout in a second. Okay. What do you think of the fried pickles? Lovely. Lovely? Oh, good. Lovely. I have not tried them yet. Okay. What do you think of the bass? Bass is good. Bass is good. Not great. Not I think, I myself personally wasn't like, whoa! No, no, so no. I mean, the coating is good. The fish is okay. Uh -huh. um, and I'm hungry, so. I'm really grateful for it. <laughs> I want to try frying up that trout next, but uh, not a bad plate. Mm -mm, not at all. So we have here the trout fillet. Now before we add it, we shall add some more of this. Make sure to keep away from the eyes. And we add our trout. And here is the trout going in. Ooh. And we'll... Uh, Give them a little friend here, a little bass fillet. Mmm. Ooh, looking good, looking good. We'll give this a little flip here. And a little flip there. And you can tell the color difference between the two fish. Wow. That is what I'm talking about right there, folks. Ooh, I think it's done. Done. So beautiful. Oh yeah, the trout's starting to fall apart. That's a sign it's done. Look at that, folks. Look at that. And before we sample this, got a whole plate of, of pickles here. Not a plate, a little bag. A ton. Oh yeah, stir those around good. Reminds me of working at Chick-fil-A in the back, cooking up chicken nuggets. You gotta stir them so they don't stick together. <sighs> Pops, oh, if yeah. you would try the trout and tell us how it compares. All right. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is so hot. I might have to wait just a second. Yeah, if you want, that. oh man, pinkness. Let's wait a second for that to cool oh, if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. All, right, All right, go for it. Here we go. 
Texture is fantastic. Flavor is good. You know, it needs a little more salt. Needs a little maybe, more salt. You know, maybe I didn't salt my stuff good enough, well, which is rare for me. Well, and it could be that I'm so used to the ocean stuff here lately and everything. Uh -huh. you know, but anyway, I think I need a little more salt. We need more salt on it, but it is rare it's day, guys, that I undersalt things. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Making me crave it. Trout. Oh. That looks like salmon. Mm -hmm. It really does have a salmon flavor uh -huh. to it, guys. It looks like salmon. Kind of tastes like salmon. The texture is definitely like salmon. I mean, it's, uh -huh. a, it's a good. Wow. Well, I need to get that. That is one of the best trout I've, I've eaten. Mm -hmm. Wow, Paula. Good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were sitting there oohing and on over the uh, fish, guys, and we forgot about the pickles. Yeah, they're, they're fine. We sit. We weren't too long. Oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. Southern fried goodness. Bro, you wanna try some uh Bro fried pickles? Surely. Surely I will try some fried pickles. I would pick the ones on the bottom that are not sizzling, man. Dude, let's see how you did. You're on the fried yeah, pickle king. You you are the fried pickle king, that's for sure. Your whole family likes fried pickles. Your daughter. Well, hot. Oh, I got seasoning. Yeah. What is that? It's like a Southwest. They're like a Southwest pickle, basically. That gum. That's fried fish feast going on here. If you guys want to dip them in a little of that sauce, there. Mm. Sauce is the boss. That is good sauce for me. Yeah, that Southwest seasoning's legit. If anybody wants to send me any seasoning, you can always send it to Ace's PO box and just mark it Micah. <laughs> for anyone out there. Shameless, man. Well, guys, we fished a little more and my dad caught two other ones. But I caught, I didn't catch any other ones. But uh, it was still a great time out here. What a good time. Oh, well, good recipe. Epic. Good day. Good recipe. Make sure to check out Micah's video in the description below. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.